Hi and welcome to this edition of Tech Training with Matt. Today we're going to be talking about how to utilize the TV systems that are built in the upstairs and in the downstairs classrooms. There's a TV downstairs in room 5 that's a 40 inch. There's a TV upstairs in room 12, room 10, and room 7, all ranging from 40 to 47 inches. So we'll basically talk about how the setup looks and then we'll go with a little bit more of a detailed explanation of what you're supposed to do when utilizing this TV. One of the first things I want to talk about is how we're able to pull a TV away from the wall. The TVs themselves are mounted to the walls in what's called a three-axis joint mount. So it means that it can pull out, that it can swivel from left to right, and it can also angle up and down. So their default setting should always be back up against the wall. To pull them out, you're going to grab both sides with a firm grip, and you're going to pull out. And if you notice as you pull out, it will start to swing one way or the other. But once it's out with both hands, I can take it and I can move it to the left or I can take it and move it to the right. Moving it to the left or right, I can also bend the angle going up or I can bend the angle going down. You'll want to find the best angle that works for your class setup and everything that the students will be able to see. On the backs of the TVs, what you'll notice is that all of the cords are already connected. You should have two different types of cords. You should have the HDMI cords, which is your general standard setup for most of your computers, or if you have an older computer, you're going to be on the VGA setup, which you'll need your audio cable, and you'll also need the VGA cord, which is attached over here. So you'll use these little straps that are attached to it to loosen them to drop all of the cables. Each of them does have a strap attached to it to do there or on the HDMI one as well right there. Also, you'll notice that the remote for each TV is attached to the TV itself using Velcro. So find the remote for the TV on the sides. If you're using an upstairs TV, the remotes themselves are universal for every single room. So you'll want to use the power button, which is located on the side just above the HDMI cord and this little triangle button. You'll press that to turn it on and to turn the TV off, you'll press and hold to do the same thing. So at the end of the day, when you're done using all the technology, we do ask that you don't leave the cords hanging down. We want to make sure that it has a nice clean appearance and that the cords are protected at the end of each day. So to do this, you're going to take the cords and you're going to wrap them in the natural bins that the cord already has. You want to do a nice loose wrapping of it because the tighter you wrap, the greater chance of damaging the cord. So I would do a really light wrap just like this. Use the Velcro strap that's attached to the cord to wrap it around lightly pull on it to keep it nice with the nice realms on it. Then I'm going to take it and just place it right behind the TV where everything is nice and tucked. So as I go to put the TV back in its position, all the cords themselves are nice and hidden and protected as well. So the TV setups are going to be the same for every classroom that you go into. All the remotes are located on the back of the TVs. There's an HDMI cable if you're doing an HDMI. Or there's the VGA cable for the older computers which will also need an audio cable. All three of those cables are attached to the back of the TV that you can drop down. All the upstairs TVs are the LG brand, the downstairs TV is an Insignia brand, but it's all the same exact setup. You'll find all three of the individual cords attached to the back of every single TV. We do ask that you please keep these cords attached to the TVs and not take them home. We do have extras to spare just in case one gets damaged, but it's easier for teachers to utilize and to do what they need if all of the cords are present at all points in time. Room 9 and room 6 upstairs are set up a little bit differently because they're not on a TV setting, but they're actually on a projector setting. So the instructions for attaching your devices to these rooms are going to be a little bit different. The main thing that's different with these is there are no cords that are pre-attached because everything's in the walls. So all you'll need to do would be to grab one of the equipment boxes from the computer lab to be able to attach what you need to. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go into the computer lab and you're going to grab the room box for the room that you're in. Room 6 will be room 6, room 9 will be 9, and then the fellowship hall also has a box of its own. So we'll go this way now and we'll go ahead and get our box. Inside of the computer lab, in the cabinet, you'll find all the boxes that you do need. So opening it up, each of the boxes is labeled with a room number and exactly what it is. The projector, or room 9 in the projector, or the fellowship hall TV as well. So you'll grab the box corresponding only to the room that you're in and take it back to your room. So once you do have your media box back inside the room, the next thing you're going to look for is the wall plate. The wall plates are going to be near the whiteboard in both of the rooms. They are silver with your three different accents, your HDMI, your VGA, and your sound. 
So you'll go ahead and you'll connect your cord straight from one of these three into your computer. So you would grab your box, you would open it up, for instance I'm using this HDMI, I would untangle my HDMI and I would plug it into the wall outlet and then the other end would go straight into my laptop or into my other device that I'm going to be connected. If you're using one of the older computers that does have to have the VGA connection, the thicker 30 pin connection, what you're going to do is you're going to take it, you're going to pop it into the middle slot just like that. It's a heavy cord, so what you're going to want to do is make sure that you firmly tighten both of the ends of it to keep it attached to the wall. This will make sure that you have a nice strong connection as you are going to display and that you don't actually lose a signal when it comes time to playing things. This cord will only get you video. What also you need will be your actual sound cord. The sound cord will be inside your box as well. So you'll take your sound cord and you'll go ahead and you'll open this one up, pulling off the Velcro strip, taking either end, it doesn't matter which end of the cord you actually plug into it, pop it in the very top audio socket, and the other one will go into your speaker output on your phone, your iPad, or whatever other device that you have. When it comes time, once again, that you're done, right into your class, you're gonna take these cords as well. Same thing, you're going to loosely wrap them following the natural bends of the cord to make sure that we're not stressing or we're not stripping or we're bending this cable in any way that it's not designed to bend. I'll use my same strap that I had on it before to pull it off to tighten it up again. When I'm done with the cord, I'm going to take the cord, I'm going to place it back inside my box with my other cords that are already nice and neatly folded to make sure that everything fits nice and secure in the box. Very easy, very secure, and very organized as well. One of the last things to note is that room 6 and room 9, even though the projectors are both Sonic, they're different models, which means that the remotes themselves are not universal amongst each projector. So you'll want to make sure that you do grab the right box because the remote that's in the box corresponds to what projector will be in your room. For instance, we're in the room 9 box, which it says room 9 projector kit yellow. If you notice, the remote itself is marked as a yellow to identify that this remote goes to the room 9. If the white remote is in your box, it goes to room 6. So you want to make sure that you always have the right remote to be able to make sure that you're fully able to use the projector and all of its work in the class. Once again, thanks for joining this session of Technology Training with Matt. We'll hope to see you again real soon.